learned already that names don't constitute knowledge, but the knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi right, guys, how are you? My name is Swan Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. And Patreon.com slash BKC, Bare Knuckle Charting. Uh, that's soon going to change to Naked Charting. Because everything I do is based on a naked chart, just price action. Okay. All right, so let's talk about what's going on in the markets. And we'll start with the NASDAQ. Uh, we had a very nice sell-off uh, last week. And since then, we rallied. And, of course, we're going to rally up to the previous resistance area. And once we did that, we got a nice little M pattern, is what we call it. Okay, it's a 1, 2, 3 flat. And there it is. Fails at resistance, comes right back down. And now, you know, we're going to be waiting for the... Chinese stuff and everything. So don't be expecting huge sell-offs before any news comes out. You got Brexit, you got all these things going on. So what price action will do is just kind of, you know, stay in this range, explore the area, and uh, at some point resolve itself one way or another. Now I trade several accounts, uh, and this is uh, one of the accounts that I'm recovering for somebody. Uh, and you can see that, um, you know, gold, gold has been having its issues and you had a nice little drop, you had a pop, didn't quite make it to the top, okay, and then started to fail. Now it's popping back up again and, uh, you know, this is to be expected. Um, you can make an argument that this can continue on up and then start to fail. Uh, but for right now, uh, what it looks like is just rolling over, okay, it's rolling over. And uh, and you'll get something like this. Okay, and that's the more likely scenario for gold. Um, Taking a look at bonds, at, uh, you know what's going on there. And, and guys, if you remember about a year ago, everybody was saying, "Oh, stagflation! You don't understand." And the Fed is doing this, and unwinding is creating inflation and QT, and uh, it's going much, much higher, and raising rates is inflationary for the currency, and de de de, all this fucking bullshit. Oh, and I said, no, that's not that's not what's setting up. What's setting up is a rising wedge, okay? It's ultimately going to resolve to the downside. Now, did I know it was going to come this low? No, I didn't. But I knew that rates were not going to stay up there based on the uh, charting, and obviously the macro fundamentals the real macro not this fantasy shit so um, what we're seeing is usually when you start getting this kind of acceleration to the downside um, you're going to get a big pop fast okay not not that high but uh, you're going to get a big pop uh, we got a nice pop here okay came back down created a formation that kind of looked like it might be bullish okay so you give you a, an example something like this right Come on. something like this that it, it might be bullish that you know this is the way I was looking at it that you would get something like this okay that didn't happen so now there's two key areas uh, the first one the most obvious is that if it came all the way down here I don't see why it's not going to come lower and test this area, the 133, 134 area. Okay. I think there's a strong possibility. But at that point, we should be looking for more upside. Alternatively, it does not have to necessarily hit this point precisely. It can do it here. It can break through it and go back up. Or it can just test it and go back up. 
All right. Either way, somewhere in here, we should see some kind of a pop. All right. That's a key area. Um, now, the next point I want to make is that I, I told you that lower interest rates are stimulative to the economy. Okay. Uh, it's the free market that sets rates, not the Fed. Okay. So the red line is the Fed. And when the Fed was, you know, up to 250, the market gave itself a uh, stimulus. It's the market that did it first. Now what you're seeing is that the Fed is starting to chase. Okay. It's chasing all the way down. So it doesn't matter what the Fed fund rate is. What matters is that uh, the market gave itself a stimulus. And uh, you saw some of the housing data start to recover. And, uh, you know, some other parts of the economy are doing great. You know, unemployment is doing really good and, uh, and so forth. So the question you got to ask yourself is if rates are so low, things are so good and uh, stocks relative to bonds are not uh, uh, overvalued. In fact, they're undervalued. The stocks are undervalued relative to bonds. Why are we not making new highs? Right. And you're seeing that the stock market, uh, the earnings that are coming in weaker. Okay. So you got to ask yourself, the market is going to go up either because of earnings growth. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Or they're just going to uh, increase the multiple, meaning they're going to pay more money for the same amount of earnings or even less. It really comes down to those two simple things. So which is it? Are they going to pay more multiple for it? I doubt it. Okay. Uh, and, and I think uh, that's why the market is not going higher right now. It's not going higher because they're not going to pay a higher multiple. At the same time, we have repos that are, you know, they, do, they got repo problems. <laughs> How the fuck do you have repo problems with 4 trillion liquefied bonds into you know, reserves. I, I don't understand it, right? Well, the way to understand it is that those reserves ended up somewhere else where they shouldn't be, and uh, they ran out of cash. And that's the problem with the printing monster. The printing monster is always going to want more, and as long as the Fed keeps accommodating, then, you know, it's going to be an exponential more, 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 and accommodate, and accommodate, and accommodate, and you end up... <laughs> with a bigger fucking problem, okay? It's like giving candy to to a child, right? They always want more. You tell them, no, 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 your teeth are going to rot. They're like, no, I want, yeah. Okay, take some more. I don't want to hear it. Now, granted, they are short-term loans. That's what they keep telling us. That That's what it was supposed to be, right? Short-term, and now it went to October 10th. Now it's November, whatever. And, uh, you know, you have to question it. Uh, how much more are we going to keep extending it? How long before we start running full QE again? How will the market start to react if uh, everybody just starts selling bonds just because everybody else is selling bonds? <laughs> you know, uh, you start getting those money flows that the mechanics of everything, you know, and start selling, 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 everybody selling, you get the reverse effect. You know, how is that going to impact the global economy in a slowing uh, economic growth uh, environment. You know, all these things, you, you know, you got to think about. It's not just, uh, I have a six-point model. Don't worry about it. Everything is fine. Woo! Everything is great. Don't worry about it. Or the other 10-year bullshit we've been hearing. Oh, we're going into recession. Oh, we're going into recession. Oh, there's going to be a collapse. Oh, there's going to be a crash. You know, <laughs> God, that was... <laughs> and you see, they're like, no, 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 right? So um, I think given where we are, max employment, uh, uh, stable uh, inflation, s slow growth in the economy, right, uh, in, the U in, the, in the world, uh, and it's really a world problem, not a U.S. problem. Uh, it's not the same as it, it was in the past 10 years, okay? The counter argument to that is, well, you know, fuck, we've been expanding for 11 years. We're in uncharted territory. You know, maybe this is this is what happens in uncharted territory in the longest economic job expansion in history. You get slowdowns and then they accelerate, then slowdowns and accelerate, and that's the way it is. That the new 
recession is just a slowdown in the economy, right? Maybe that's the way it is. Nobody knows, okay? But we have to be cautious. We have to be smart. We have to look at the charts. We have to look at the macroeconomic data, and we contrast that, and, and we pick our, our, uh, uh, our risk rewards, and, uh, you know, that's the way you make money in investing. Uh, it's, a, it's always a different world. Remember that. It's never the same, okay? Uh, ever since the Stone Age, economics has been evolving and evolving and evolving. So you always had to change your strategy as to how to invest. So if there's anything that we can take away from all of this trillion dollar deficits, ZERP, all this money printing, quantitative easing worldwide, worldwide, okay, is that it's the MMT killer, okay? The act of printing, the act of putting uh, interest rates to zero or even negative does not uh, create economic growth. Put that out of your mind, forget about it. It's bogus, it's voodoo economics, it doesn't work that way, and you can see it for yourself right now, in real time, worldwide, all right? You cannot print value for a currency. You cannot grow the economy just because you decided to fucking print money. Large, excessive deficits and uh, transformation of uh, money from bonds to reserves and cash and so on has only led to distortions of the markets Things look a lot different today, post QE, than prior to QE. So uh, don't think that, oh, I have my economic model, I back tested to 1965, it's never been wrong. That's nonsense. Because never have we run QE, okay, and had ZERP under those conditions. So you're telling me I tested oranges, so I know what apples are going uh, are gonna to do. That's just stupid. Anybody that spent any kind of time back testing on these stupid charts and trying to automate <laughs> trading to make you rich and anything like that, you know that at some point you came up with some stupid little thing that looked vaguely good that was more right than wrong, right? And if God forbid you ever turned it on with real money, you got wiped out in a week, okay? But until the point you turned the little bot on. You were telling everybody how you, you know, you did this and you adjusted this and you looked at the, uh, you know, physics of it. <laughs> and if this crosses this, it's going to do this. And, you know, and, and you, you wouldn't shut the fuck up about it, right? Because you felt like you knew. Your new toy, you had to tell the world, right? And then... A you know, week later, hey, how's your bot going? Oh, fuck that, man. It's, it's manipulation, right? <laughs> it's bullshit. Well, that's what these people are. These people that are on social media telling you all this bullshit, that's what they are. They're just little children who think they've discovered uh, some holy grail of uh, analysis, and they're telling the world, you know, and they're going to embarrass themselves, like they always do. Look at Mike Norman. They're great unwinding. The dollar will collapse. Stagflation, hyperinflation. God, the cringy. Yeah, the great unwinding. Yeah, whatever. All right, so that is the analysis for today. Uh, please be careful. Uh, if you guys really want to understand real macroeconomics and investing in the real world, come down to patreon.com slash real macro and, uh, and sign up. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.